Michalis, I grew up in Iowa, and I currently live in New York City, um, where I've been performing and teaching for the last um, almost 15 years. Came to school here for grad school and have stayed. And um, I think the thing I'm always um, interested in as being a musician and what I find exciting about being a musician is just the, the constant variety and exploration, um, new ways of expressing oneself through sound, new ways of experiencing sound, new ways of connecting with the audience, with other musicians. I think one reason I'm particularly drawn to new music is that constantly being exposed to new ideas and new ways of doing that. Of course, I love the old masters and the tradition. I mean, I um, can still remember when I was a kid, what really got me into music, got really, really passionate was my first, buying my first CD of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony and just <laughs> playing that thing over and over and over again. Um, I actually found that CD <laughs> lying in my mom's house and I listened to it and it was not the greatest recording, but I, I still remember being so... <laughs> taken with the piece that I just listened to that thing for all the time and it's still one of my favorite pieces um but yeah I went to I from Iowa where I grew up I, I went to Oberlin College where I um I did do a double degree but I was also highly involved in the contemporary music scene there and it's obviously given birth to a lot of different music groups um, new music groups and a lot of composers have come out of there so I was kind of um, inspired and taken with that kind of just excitement and energy that came out of that world and um, brought me to New York. And, and I, you know, found that same kind of energy and excitement um, mm -hmm. here in the city and definitely at the conference. I think it's um, one of the, one of the things that's so wonderful about the conference is, is that for about two weeks, you really are in this sort of intense environment of exploration and high level performance and um, it, brings it together so many different people who are all in music for the right reasons and eager to be curious and eager to work together. And um, yeah, I mean, I just love it and always happy to make it part of my summers. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's nice to remind ourselves that we actually enjoy doing what we're doing sometimes. It, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's why else, why else would we do it? I mean, really, honestly. Yeah. Exactly. But it's, you know, I mean, I think everyday life does sort of get in the way of that type of self-reminding because, you know, life is complicated, especially right now, life is very complicated, but life in general is a pretty complicated experience. And to, you know, to sort of have it, just to have the moments of pause to step back and say, oh yeah, I actually like what I do. I enjoy <laughs> this and I think I have something to contribute. Um, I well, I think, I mean, I do think that musicians as a, if I can paint a broad brush, I think one thing that most musicians have in common is a um, high work ethic, mm. which can definitely lead to, you know, feelings of stress or feeling maybe, um, you know, overworked or whatever, but, but that it's always usually coming from a, an authentic place of wanting to do one's best. Also, um, especially in the new music world, I think there's a, uh, you know, a lot of feelings of integrity of representing the composer's work at the highest level. Um, you know, I think especially at the conference with working with the young composers, you know, one thing that we take very seriously as an ensemble there is, is making sure that their composers get amazing recordings because it's such an important part of their career development and um, using it for applications, whether it be for grants or for jobs or, or those kind of things. And so I think, yeah, I mean, I think um, that kind of day-to-day um, -day work can, you know, yeah, for two weeks, like we're working pretty intensely. And I know that after the two weeks is over, I'm always like really tired, <laughs> <laughs> but I always, have fond memories. I can't think of a single summer where I wasn't like, that was a lot of work, but that was also really cool. You know, one of the great things about the conference is how um, it's kind of the social element. I mean, you, you're on a, in a very small space and obviously there's a lot of work going on, but there's also, you know, just having meals together, hanging out after concerts, those kind of social experiences. I, I mean, I know that they're informal, but I actually think that they can be a really important 
um, experience and a very formative experience for many people. Um, even us, like professionals who have been doing it for a while, like, you know, those conversations can lead to personal growth, personal reflection. And, sure. and I think that's, you know, one of the greatest, you know, another really fascinating and wonderful thing about, about these summer experiences, um, sort of like having those moments of self-discovery outside of the rehearsal room or the concert space. I'm always interested um, in discovering how composers deal with sound and I'm like kind of really fascinated with the ways that sounds interact with each other with the way that you know the way that timbres mix um, the way that um, you know you can create new sounds um, combine new sounds I really find that for me like when I'm practicing that one of the the most enjoyable parts be you know beyond just learning the piece is also sort of like learning a composer's sound world and sort mm. of like getting into that environment because I think you know all composers create their own unique sound space and no two no two composers are the same um, and I don't mean just you know current composers I mean composers going back for all of time you know I think that for me that sort of exploration and discovery of sound keeping oneself fresh to new possibilities is is one thing that I, I find really enjoyable and I hope that I, you know, bring that to the work. Um, you know, I think, I think of my work as being creative in the sense that like I am part of um, creating that vision that the composer has in mind. And, and I think it, it's interesting too, to like see how different performers like realize something and yeah. two performers never like play the same piece the same. And that's also really amazing. Which mine maybe sharing a non-musical experience or non-musical, yeah, just sort of a non-musical experience or interaction in your life that sort of has a really direct impact on what you do as a musician? That's a good question. I think um, in a way it's not really a sort of a unique experience in my daily life, but I do try to spend a lot of time outside and I, I try to sort of um, be aware of my sonic environment in a very sort of present way. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a form of, um, I wouldn't say meditation necessarily, but just mindfulness. And I, I think about that a lot um, in terms of sort of the greater, our greater mission as, as musicians, I think, um, helping people listen more deeply, helping people be more aware of their sound is, is another way of sort of richly experiencing the world. I mean, there's so many ways of, of doing that, but since we're concerned with sound primarily, that um, when I go for a walk in, in the park or, I, or I'm um, taking my daughter outside for a stroll or going to the playground or whatever, I'm sort of trying to be richly aware of the acoustic environment that I'm in and, and I guess it's not, I don't think of that as really being a musical experience. It's a different kind of just awareness. And yep. I mean, I know that that does play a role in some, some kinds of music, but for me, I find that to be a very grounding experience and a very like um, almost spiritual experience sure. for myself. And it's something that I, that I do, you know, I try to do on a regular basis keeps me grounded in the world and keeps me inspired. I think when I do find myself, I mean, I think, you know, we have a toddler right now, she's turning three in a few days. So much of our life is wrapped up in nurturing her and taking care of her. And yeah. it can be quite, quite chaotic <laughs> with that. And, but I do try to check myself, like whenever I find myself being like, you know, needing some space, I'm like, you know, we actually have a, really good i mean and we it's important to to remember that how privileged all of us are i just remember like kind of first night i showed up very late i think because i was coming from something else and yeah. you know kind of walking into the big lounge in wellesley and it's like you know oh, sure. 100 people all like <laughs> getting into it and i was like whoa what is this and i did know some of the people because i mean a lot of the staff is from new york they're you know, in the music scene. So I wasn't like a complete, complete stranger, but it was definitely like kind of like a, uh, 
a lively introduction to yeah. the sort of especially the the night after which it sounds like it might have been sort of a long yeah i mean yeah i think it was probably the first night or the second night that everybody just gets together and yeah that's a good party hey kurt you know i i apologize i just yeah i just reflect on the sort of communal atmosphere i mean that's that's the take the big takeaway for me and the sort of esprit de corps mm -hmm. of the place and and i i guess if i had to you know put that into a moment i think you know usually there's a a moment at the end of the two weeks where we're kind of finishing up the last recordings or the last concert but you know just kind of a recognition of what we've accomplished in a short amount of time i mean i think it, it's always kind of amazing to me how much we do in two weeks. I mean, oh, yeah. there's a lot of, you know, there's lots of concerts and, and everybody gives it their all. And it's a very intense amount of, uh, it's an, an intense time, but it's extremely rich and rewarding. And yeah, those are the, the sort of memories as kind of wrapped all together that I would sort of single out. Um, I mean, there's like tons of like memorable individual performances, but it's, difficult to sort of elevate one of those mm -hmm. as being sort of iconic, I guess. But my own personal opinion is that for classical music to work um, as a culturally relevant thing, not just for the next 10, 20 years, but the next 100 years, that new music is going to have to be one of the central elements. That, and, I, and I think that the more that we can do to help audiences connect to that, to see the rich process that goes behind that. Um, I'm all for that. And I think that the conference is sort of, yeah, it's uniquely situated to do that, given that it kind of blends these different worlds, these different components. Um, everything's happening at the same time. You know, I think that that's a wonderful thing. And I, I hope that, you know, um, that that model can sort of become more common and become, you know, more widespread. Yeah, I agree. I think you're absolutely right with the uniqueness and the um, the interactive quality between all the different yeah. areas of the conference, how important that is. Yeah, totally. Well, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kurt. Correct.